underwater, communities all across Metro Detroit hit with rising floodwaters, and the worst may still be to come. And pothole season is here. So what is being done to fix one of the area's worst roads? Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News First at 4 starts now. After three days of steady rain, it is finally starting to dry out. For the very latest, let's send it over to Ben. Karen, it's never good TV to start with an empty map, but in this case, I think it's warranted. It is finally stopped raining uh, in the southern part of Michigan. There are some showers here across northern parts of Ohio. Those will stay to our south. We're in for dry conditions at least through the day tomorrow. And then things start to change as we get into Friday. Now, even though the flood watch has been canceled, there are still river flood warnings, which means flooding is happening in these locations. The Lower Rouge River, the Rouge River, and the Clinton River here in Macomb County. And multiple spots up here in Genesee County as well. You saw some of the pictures that we're seeing with the uh, creeks and rivers out of their banks, and we could be seeing that expand because as you know, in a, in a flood situation, sometimes those rivers continue to rise even after that rain stops and the rainfall was significant. 3.36 inches reported in Pinckney. Manchester picked up over three inches of rain. It looks like some of the highest totals were in our west zone and those numbers decreased as you worked your way to the east. Linden in Genesee County close to three inches, just over two at Metro Airport in Farmington picked up 2.17 uh, as of uh, right now. Now tonight we're looking at dry conditions, mostly cloudy skies, but the big problem is going to be the temperatures as we drop tonight into the 20s for lows. That's going to freeze all this standing water, so we're going to have a lot of ice to be worrying about as we head towards the morning commute. The system next is going to be just off to our south and east, so we may get brushed with a couple flakes down near the state line in Monroe and Lenawee counties, and we're talking down towards Lamberville, Toledo. Don't be surprised if you see a couple flakes, but most of us will miss out. Then as we get through the day on Thursday, uh, the clouds will be with us, but we will be dry. And then Friday morning, look at this. We will get our next push of moisture. It may be cold enough to start out as some freezing rain, but that is quickly going to change to liquid as temperatures rise back to the 40s, back above average through the day on Friday. So nighttime lows tonight, colder than what we have been used to. That's for sure. 24 is where we're going. And don't forget, things are going to be frozen walking out the door in the morning. But we will be back above 32, probably before lunchtime in a lot of spots. 39 is where we're going for a high. Clouds will start. We will get some sunshine in here in the afternoon, uh, but it's still going to be mixed with the clouds. And temperatures generally on the mild side for most of the upcoming forecast. We do have rain Friday and Saturday in the forecast, but all told between these days, uh, we're looking at less than an inch total. And then once we get into Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday, drier conditions, temperatures still on the warmer side of mild, more side of average, I should say, but those morning lows will peak uh, below 32 in some spots early next week. So there will be some freezing and thawing, just not a whole lot of it as we get through the next seven days, Karen. Why we may have a break. There's some serious flooding near the Clinton River right now. This is video from Sky 4 at River Vista Street in Davis and Utica. The entire neighborhood neighborhood impacted by the flooding. The Clinton River is overflowing and this flood water may continue to rise as it continues to rain. Now take a look at video from Sky 4 of the River Raisin in Monroe County. The water was at 8.7 feet and rising at 1 a.m. today. Flood stage is 9 feet. The crest is expected to be 9.7 tomorrow. The river and area streams and creeks swollen with melting snow and have more than an inch of moisture that has fallen since Monday. We'll have a live report from the hardest hit areas ahead on Local 4 News at 5. Macomb County has kicked off a massive project to fix Mound Road's pothole problem. Today, County Executive Mark Hackle announced Mound Road will be completely resurfaced in Sterling Heights from 14 to 18 mile roads in both directions. The project will cost more than $10 million and will not be finished until the end of the year. We got to figure this out. That's when Mayor Taylor came and said, hey, we got, we got a problem because our fire department, our police department are complaining because of the problems. This is a dangerous road. We may have to shut it down, and we agree. This may be a situation where we're going to have to shut this down. The resurfacing of Mound Road is part of a larger $217 million project in Macomb County, expected to last at least five years. A lockdown at the Garden City High School that lasted all morning has been lifted. The school was placed on lockdown just before 8 after a bullet was found in the school. Police did not order an evacuation. Investigators determined no specific threats had been made against the school or students. At this time, still no word on where that bullet came from. No weapon has been found. 
A teen is locked up right now accused of making a threat against South Lyon High School. Police say 18 year old Ryan DeBrune allegedly asked a friend through Snapchat if he wanted to quote reenact the Florida school shooting. Well, that friend informed investigators. Deputies conducted a search of DeBrune's home and did not find any firearms. He was arraigned yesterday and remains in custody this afternoon. He will be back in court next Wednesday. The world's best known evangelist, the Reverend Billy Graham, has died. The son of a North Carolina dairy farmer lived to become one of the most beloved and most powerful religious leaders of our time. He was the unofficial pastor of the White House, giving spiritual counsel to every president since Truman. He also made the Gallup survey of the 10 most admired men in the world 37 times. During his life, he traveled the world, preaching to an estimated 215 million people in 185 countries. Billy Graham was 99 years old. Hundreds of students and teachers are rallying at Florida's state capitol to push for stronger gun laws. The rally in Tallahassee has drawn more than 3,000 people and comes after Florida lawmakers refused to debate a bill that would have banned AR-15s and other assault rifles. Meantime, in South Florida, several schools planned walkouts to show solidarity with Parkland survivors. And in Washington, President Trump is hosting a listening session with high school students and teachers at the White House. California police are looking for thieves who broke into two liquor stores on Monday, stealing an ATM from one of them. Take a look as the back end of a delivery van smashes through the front doors of a liquor store. At least three men, a driver and two men in ski masks, start to rob the place. Then, about 30 minutes later, the same crew breaks into another business just down the road. The stores are back open but have considerable damage to repair as well as recovering cash from that stolen ATM. Police still investigating. More gold medals will be handed out tonight in Pyeongchang. Our coverage kicks off at 7.30 with the Olympic Zone. That rolls into primetime coverage with the gold medal final of men's freestyle skiing and the gold medal final of the women's bobsled. Team USA is a strong medal contender in both events. And thanks so much for joining us for our first to four webcast. We are back in 50 minutes with a local four news at five. See you then.